Liberal Viewer presents. So in my most popular video so far this year, I showed how Bill O'Reilly and his so-called no spin zone on Fox News edited his interview with Jon Stewart to make himself look better, even while accusing Jon Stewart's comedy show of unfairly editing material, as you can see, for example, when he was interviewed just beforehand by Fox News anchor Megyn Kelly in this clip. I, I like Stewart in the sense that he's very witty, his, his people are good. I don't think he's mean-spirited, although he can get a, carried away, for yeah. sure. I don't like the fact that he cuts his clips up. Uh, takes him out of context, right. so I'm going to have to talk to him about that tonight. <laughs> of course, I've shown many examples of Fox News dishonestly editing things out of context, including the 20 videos I put on my Fox News bias in its video editing playlist, and last week again I caught Bill O'Reilly's show dishonestly editing video, this time to smear one of President Obama's nominees to be a federal judge, Goodwin Liu, a man I actually met when the end of his service as a board member for the American Civil Liberties Union of Northern California overlapped with the beginning of my service there, and this time Bill O'Reilly brought Megyn Kelly onto his show to help with the smear job, as you can see in this clip. Miss Megyn defended the nomination a couple of weeks ago, but now we learn that Judge Liu apparently believes in reparations for slavery. There are white families who were not involved Yes, directly or even indirectly with the, uh, with the slave trade, but who still benefited from it. Um, is it going to require us to uh, give up um, our money? Uh, it's going to require giving up something. Huh, now the Fox News editing there took two clips of Professor Liu that were more than a minute and a half apart, totally out of context, to dishonestly claim Professor Liu was advocating for reparations, even though Professor Liu never even said the word reparations, never mind advocating for them, and in context he was participating in a PBS panel discussing a movie about people who find out their ancestors were in the slave trade, and in that context Professor Liu started out discussing problems with the concept of guilt here. One um, aspect of the film that I struggled a lot with was the uh, families uh, dealing with the sense of guilt about the family history. And the more I thought about it, the more I came to, s to believe that the notion of guilt or the assignment of blame um, was ultimately not going to be a very useful way of moving things forward. And it was in that context that Professor Liu discussed the specific problem with the concept of guilt in the part from which Fox News took its first out-of-context clip that you can see here. Maybe there are white families who were not involved, yes, directly or even indirectly, with the, uh, with the slave trade, but who still benefited from it. And then there is the whole question which you put on the table about people who came to America after. Um, and, you know, like my family. Uh, and why is it that this movie speaks to me, you know, so deeply yet? Hmm, and having pointed out this problem with the concept of guilt, Professor Liu next differentiated between guilt and responsibility with this argument. I think I would draw a distinction between a concept of guilt which locates accountability in a sort of limited set of wrongdoers and, on the other hand, a concept of responsibility, which is, I think, a more broad suggestion that all of us, whatever our lineage, whatever our ancestry, whatever our complicity, still have a moral duty to, as Katrina says in, in the last bit, to make things right. But when it comes to how America can make things right regarding the legacy of slavery, Professor Liu never advocated for any specific method, as you can see in the segment from which Fox News took its second out-of-context clip that you can see here. Willing to give up uh, to make things right. Because it's going to require us to give up something. Um, whether it is uh, the seat at Harvard, uh, the seat at Princeton, or is it going to require us to give up our uh, segregated neighborhoods, our segregated schools? Um, is it going to require us to uh, give up um, our money? Uh, it's going to require giving up something. And so, until so in context, Professor Liu described affirmative action, desegregation, and monetary reparations, but never advocated for any of them. And in fact, later in the discussion, he actually ruled out a national approach to this kind of reparative justice, 
arguing for more local and issue-based initiatives as you can see here. Instead of looking for the single national strategy, which is what everybody always looks for, think about what you can do on a much smaller scale in much smaller communities around specific problems that people face, whether it's in their schools, in their workplaces, access to health care, in their housing, whatever it may be. Um, because unless, unless it's framed around a specific problem, the conversation will just be that, conversation. Hmm, and that's an interesting nuanced position that bears no relationship to the misrepresentation of Professor Liu's position supported by dishonest editing back on Fox, again, that claimed... He believes in reparations for slavery. There are white families who were not involved, yes, directly or even indirectly, with the, uh, with the slave trade, but who still benefited from it. Um, is it going to require us to... Uh, give up um, our money, uh, it's going to require giving up something. Huh, now that you've seen the context, it's obvious the editing was dishonest, but what's worst is that those clips were the only supposed facts in the whole segment in which Bill O'Reilly brought on Megyn Kelly to give the weak defense of Professor Liu in the face of Bill O'Reilly's name-calling and personal attacks that you can see here. And why do we want another loon on the federal bench? Because, Bill, this is... As, about as far left a judge as you would expect Barack Obama to nominate, and he's entitled to do that. <laughs> well, I'm glad Fox News anchor Megyn Kelly, who's a lawyer, at least accepts the president's power to appoint judges, but she did nothing to balance out Bill O'Reilly's mischaracterization of Professor Liu as the argument continues. And I'm not saying the president's enti not entitled to it. Number one, it's embarrassing for the president, but he shouldn't be Look, confirmed by anyone. This is, this is what it comes down to. He, I, I, in my opinion, he's no farther to the left than Alito was to the right. And I, I had a hard time Alito? with it. Yeah, Alito's pretty far right. Give, give Listen, me he, one statement that Judge Alito has made that puts him in any kind of a category. No, he doesn't say Lee. things like this, but he's a, he's a cons <laughs> Of course, Professor Liu didn't say anything like this either if you remove the dishonest editing, but that didn't stop Bill O'Reilly from again misrepresenting Professor Liu's statement, which was again met with Megyn Kelly's non-defense defense of Professor Liu that you can see here. All right, who says, yeah, even the white families who didn't have anything to do with it, we, they have to owe and pony up something which would tear this country apart. Can you imagine some of the things that Ruth Bader Ginsburg said running the ACLU? Okay. I mean, the lawyer for the ACLU. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, she, you can't, you don't have any sympathy. She's I don't a want, lefty jurist, I but, don't but, want, she, yeah. and but it was she's a, a fair choice. I don't think so. Yes, I think she's is. done a lot of damage to the Constitution. Because you don't like the way she interprets That's, the Constitution. No, that doesn't mean she's not she's entitled to a seat on the U.S. Supreme Court. And so would this be. He be an, so would this be? Notice how Bill O'Reilly just labeled Professor Liu an activist based on nothing, and while Megyn Kelly did argue that the activist label is just what conservatives call judges they don't like, the rest of their argument was almost all heat and no light, mostly based on the dishonest editing of those clips of Professor Liu, but also including other smears, as you can see in this clip. This guy is as left as Alito is right, and I challenge you to give me a statement that Judge Alito made that puts him in this category, and you can't. So therefore, Miss Megan, take it from me, I'm older than you. Don't make a statement like that unless you can back it up. Oh, come on. Okay. I covered the Alito confirmation hearings. I've read all well, of the man's the cases. Statement. Don't get. Let, give me one. I don't have one at the ready, so I to compare it to that yeah, statement. You can't but make let a me tell you, though. Alito leans right. What? You, he leans right. This guy is he, so far left, he should be living in Havana. You can't find judges. Living in Havana? To me, that comes pretty close to explicitly calling Professor Liu un American when, in fact, Professor Liu is an American success story. The son of Taiwanese immigrants with excellent credentials who's excelled in both the sciences and the humanities. He's very well qualified to be a federal judge, and that's what makes this Fox News smear job so unfair, which is why I'm ending this video with two special action questions asking you to help. First, if you agree the Fox News editing, name-calling, and personal attacks were wrong, will you send this video to O'Reilly at foxnews.com and ask for a correction and an apology to Professor Goodwin Liu? And... If you want to help balance out the Fox News smear job with Professor Liu's confirmation hearing currently set for April 16th, will you call or fax the Democratic majority or Republican minority offices of the Senate Judiciary Committee using the information at judiciary.senate.gov slash contact.cfm and ask the senators to vote to approve the nomination of Professor Goodwin Liu? I, YouTube, you decide.